Hi everybody, let's take a look at problem 4-10a, which is one that deals with calculating equivalent units, so we're dealing with process costing, and we'll take a look at applying the costs, and we're using the weighted average method. Okay, I'll read the problem that you see on the screen. Laura Holdsworth Company manufactures porcelain dolls that go through three porcelain departments prior to completion. Information about work in the first department, molding, is given below for July. Okay, so we know is, we started, now to the left of my mouse, with 15,000 units. Um, started into production where was 160,000. Completed and transferred out was 155,000. Uh, we need to determine how many were in process at the end of the month. And we have the cost data, in terms of material cost, conversion cost, and what was added. So we've got the beginning inventory and what was added. And the first requirement says, let me slide a little bit here, compute the equivalent units of production. Okay, now I'm going to move this off to the right and we'll solve this. And uh, hopefully I won't have to slide back and forth too much to show you where the information came from. Now I worked this ahead of time just to make the demo go quicker. So the first thing we need to do is uh, bring to light uh, uh, what we need to compute, what information we need. So the units transferred starts off with units and been beginning work in process. And then we need to add in units started into production, less units and ending work in process, and that will compute units transferred. Okay, so if we drop these into uh, light here, we know that u units and beginning and um, uh, was 15,000. Units started into production was 160. Now, we don't know units ending, but we do know 155 was transferred. So if we had 160 and 155 was transferred, we must have had 20,000 that were in ending. Okay, makes sense? Uh, hopefully that does. Okay, let me keep on moving down here. All right, next we'll take a look at equivalent units of production because that's what we have to get to. Well, first we have that what was transferred to the next department, and they gave that is 155,000. If it's 155,000 units were transferred, we know they're 100% complete in terms of material and conversion. We've got to then figure out how much are they complete to ending work in process. And they tell us 40% were complete as to material, so we need to take the value of ending work in process, that's 20,000 times 40%. That comes up with 8,000 units, and we use the same approach um, for conversion, the 20,000 units times 10%. The 10% comp complete is given right here. Let me slide back over again. Right, 40% complete materials, 10% complete for um, conversion costs. I'm going to slide back over. Not an even slide, but enough so that uh, we can see what we're, do we're doing here. Okay, so then the next thing we need to do is determine the equivalent units of production, and we simply add. Okay, so you see I'm just using the sum field in both of these cells. 163 and 157 is the answer for requirement 1. Okay, now, let's slide over and see what requirement 2 said. Requirement 2 said, I'm reading right here, compute the cost per equivalent unit for the month. Round your answers to do decimal places, omit the dollar sign. Okay, so for cost per equivalent unit for material and conversion. Let's move on back over. And we'll say, we'll compute cost per equivalent unit for material conversion, and I'll put a total as well. So we first we have to compute what's the cost of beginning work in process. Um, let me move this a little bit wider here. Then we'll slide a little bit over. There we go. Okay, so beginning work in process, 14,100, given right there. By the way, that's the material cost. This is the conversion cost, 22,680. Let me drop that in. And I won't slide. I'll, you're gonna have to trust me that off to the left of my mouse here. It says 
work in process beginning material cost of conversion. Okay, then we need to figure out what were the costs added in July. And this one, or to the left of my mouse here, was the material cost added. So that's 142,380. And, to, and now to the left of my mouse, the 237,940 was the conversion cost. So we add that. We can total it. And we have the total cost to account for. Now all we need to do is divide by the equivalent units of production that we calculated above, right? So we just reference the cell above, meaning set it equal to the dollar uh, or the the amount that's appearing in the cell above. In this case, it's cell L26. We say equal L uh, equal L26, and we get that same 163,000 equivalent units. Copy that to there, and we've got um, the equivalent units of production. Now all we need to do is the division. Okay, and maybe I should even label this, uh, show you what I'm doing. This is, in this case, A, this is going to be B, then cost per equivalent unit is going to be A divided by B. Right, just to sort of spell this out, and you'll see that that's all I'm doing. I'm taking the value of A, dividing by B, and I've got cost per equivalent unit, and that's the requirement for part two determine the cost per equivalent unit. All right, let's slide down again. I'll move over to the side and we'll read requirement three. To the left of my mouse it says determine the total cost of ending work in process inventory and of the units transferred to the next department. Okay, slide on over here. We'll start bringing this to light. The cost per equivalent unit for material and conversion cost, right? First we need to figure out what was the ending work in process inventory. That's what they want us to drop in for material conversion in total. Well, the ending work in process inventory requires a little bit of a calculation. Um, first we need to come up with the equivalent units of production. Okay, the 8,000 and 2,000. Now, where did we come up with that? Those are referenced from above, where we calculated the ending work in process. And if you need to go back and look at that, you can. You can hit the F2 key. It's the 10% times the number of units and, uh, and the 40% times the number of units. Okay, and then the cost per equivalent unit, uh, 96, which came from right there. $1.66 for conversion cost per equivalent unit came from what we calculated in requirement 2. And if we've got the units and the equivalent units, then now we just need to label them and multiply. Cost of ending work in process is going to be the 8,000 equivalent units times 96 cents for material cost and the 2,000 equivalent units of conversion times $1.66 for um, conversion. So what we're essentially doing is a great deal of averaging, right? and we're using the weighted average method. We've got a number of units in production. We need to value how much get, gets moved to the next step and how much remains in ending work in process. And so based on using this essential averaging technique, right, we determine equivalent units, divide the cost by the equivalent units, we come up with cost of ending inventory. Okay, um, and if you add those both together, oh, I suppose I should write in the word total here, um, and I should make that look the same, we've got $11,000. That's the cost of ending work in process. That's what goes to the left of my mouse here in McGraw-Hill Homework Manager in the answer uh, area. Okay, now let's take a look at, the next thing we need to calculate is units transferred to the next department. So I'll bring that to light, and we'll start working on that. Um, um, calculation. And, and this should look similar, similar now to what we just did. Units transferred to the next step were given from above, right? 155,000, both for material and conversion. We then need to come up with the cost per equivalent unit. We calculated that from above, right? And we do that same uh, a calculation cost of units completed and transferred out 
and what we come up with is 148.8. We're just doing the multiplication here now. Okay, take the 155,000 units times the cost per equivalent units, 1066, multiply it. Multiple, do the same for conversion and uh, add the two, we get the total. We get 406,100. Okay, that takes care of requirement three. And finally, let's take a look at requirement four. And that'll be the end of this, uh, this problem. Okay, requirement four says, prepare a cost reconciliation between cost determined in requirement three and the cost of beginning work and process inventory and cost added in July. And we have this little schedule, cost to be accounted for, cost of beginning, cost added, total cost accounted for. And then we look at it again and make sure the two match by saying, how much did we have in ending work and process and how much was completed and transferred out. So the two costs should equal. The cost to be accounted for should equal. Slide back over here and we'll, you know, let me just label that schedule, right? That's what we're going to do. And now we fill in the numbers. Well, how did we get that number? Um, we take the value in L29 and M29. Uh, okay, so if I slide back up, L29 and M29 was the cost of work in process for material and conversion. So we add those two together. The cost of production came from L30 and M, L cell M30 and M30. If I slide back up, well, all that means is we've already calculated the cost of production. Um, that was row 30, which is the cost added in July, the 142 and the 237. So really, we could have just totaled these here and, and put them down. But I did it the slow way, or and I get 417,100, which will match the 417,100 there, the total cost per equivalent unit or the total cost to account for, right? Now, we want this one to equal the same thing. How much was our cost in ending inventory? Well, we've already calculated that in part three, the 11,000 that comes from right there. We just reference the cell, and the cost to be transferred in come from the 406,100. When we add those together, did we get 417? And we did. So we've completed requirement for the last schedule. And that's this problem, everyone. Thank you.